the British National Party is my baby. It's not, not necessarily my family's or my husband's or anyone else's. It is mine, all mine, my own, for me. And I love it. It's mine. <laughs> all mine. <laughs> The British National Party was formed in the early 1980s. Born out of the National Front, the party is desperate to shed the idea that it mainly consists of racist thugs. In line with the UK's three main parties, it has put its female members to the fore in an effort to soften the party's image. This film follows three women in the BMP and finds out what they think about political history. Don't tell me I don't believe in the Holocaust because it really angers me. I do. I do. Just not sure about the numbers? I'm just not sure about the numbers, yeah. Their views on race... I know just a little while ago you referred to an Asian as a packy. Yes, I did. That's, 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 a, that's a legal term for them. They refer to themselves as packies. And what it's like to be married to a man whose political views affect every aspect of daily life. So when you married Nick, did you have any idea that this is how things would be? Well, I didn't expect I'd be going down this path. I don't really know what I thought, but I didn't expect this, no. What Listen you're saying is you have a problem with the Asian Let community. Oh, you fat slag. You're spreading malicious lies no, and rubbish. It's it is saying. a lie. Here in West Yorkshire live the BNP poster family, the Cassies. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> family life is very busy. Trying to look after the house and look after the children, look after the pets and work and have time for each other. It all gets... There's not, many, not enough hours in the day. Nick Cass is the BNP's party manager. He's a fully paid employee and a close political ally of the controversial leader, Nick Griffin. As well as being a full-time mum, Susie Cass works as a fitness instructor. I'm honest, caring. <laughs> Probably a nag. <laughs> Their wholesome image as a normal white family make them invaluable to a party desperate to shake off the idea that they're all skinhead boot boys. <laughs> Are you able to talk and do that at the same time? Whether I'll punch in the right place or not. <laughs> Tell me about your views on different cultures and races. Well, you've got different breeds of everything, haven't you? Different breeds of dogs, different breeds of cats, different breeds of horses, different breeds of monkeys. Different breeds of fish, you have every every different breed of everything. And you've got different breeds of humans. Are you against different racial groups mixing? If it had been done before, we wouldn't be here now. Well, we'd probably still be here, wouldn't we? But we'd be yeah, but we wouldn't be white. Would that matter? Oh, don't you think it matters? I'm asking you. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it matters. How can it be beneficial that uh, the West um, mixes into oblivion with people from third world nations that can't, you know, look after their own um, state of affairs over there? You know, I don't see how it's a positive thing. There should be a birth limit as well, in my opinion. So when you say a birth limit, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, I think we need to in increase our own birth rate and reduce what the... You mean the white population? Yeah. Susie says she began to question racial and cultural differences as a child. When she was young, her father was often away on business, and while on a trip to Jamaica, he died of a heart attack. When the body was discovered, his watch and some other possessions were missing. The only thing that you can conclude from that is either 
the person who reported him dead stole them or somebody found him earlier and stole them and that doesn't leave a very nice taste in my mouth. I sort of pushed it to the back of my mind in a way. Well, I suppose I did. Um, mm -hmm. At the age of 15, a year after her dad's death, Susie met Nick. He was already involved with the British National Party and the experiences of her youth were put into a new political context. You know, if it hadn't been brought to my attention, if, if Nick hadn't been doing what he was doing, I really can't tell you how I would feel now. And his views, what, what effect did they have on you? Or did, they, did they have much of an impact on you? I'd say they had a huge impact on me, yeah, because it's now my life. Marlene Guest is an organiser for the British National Party in Rotherham. She stood as a BNP councillor five times, but has never been elected. Today, she's canvassing on behalf of another candidate. I like to add a little bit of razzmatazz to an election, cos that's all gone now. I, 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 I like to jazz it up a bit. Can you hold that? Can you hold the flag? <laughs> fly the flag. Can you fly the flag? <laughs> Fed it through, fed it through. You should be out on your own, Marlene, you shouldn't you? <laughs> Marlene's roped in local activists, John and Peter, to help her spread the message. Marlene joined the BNP five years ago and has become one of its most active members. Ladies and gentlemen, you shall vote today in today's local by election. Vote for our local candidate. Chris Myers, the local British Carol Myers. Use your vote today, ladies and gentlemen. Use it wisely. Vote for Carol Myers, your British National Party candidate in the Valley Ward. So where, where is Carol, Marlene? Where is she? Yeah. He's having a tea, I think. Marlene's message starts getting through to the locals. Off <laughs> <laughs> oh, you say weirdos. <laughs> Told you, didn't I? It's a post. It's a post to play them what's rousing and get some going. Oh, take notice. You're supposed to play Jerusalem, you downy. Down here. <laughs> <laughs> Will you play number 14 and do as you're told? I'd request. <laughs> You'd request it, right. Vote for British jobs for British people and to follow the British culture, the British tradition and the British way of life. You're not a battery. Have we? Yeah. Oh, God. Down in Leafy Surrey is the British National Party's South East Regional Secretary, Lynn Moser. Uh, coming into the hall, um, obviously this house has been totally renovated and decorated and God knows what. Uh, and as you can see, I am a cat person. Cats are my thing. I just adore cats. This is the bedroom. I don't know what stage it's in, but oh, it's roughly, it's okay, yes, it's not too bad. This is the master bedroom. Alias, me and me and my master. <laughs> this is uh, my Jaguar painting. Um, yes, he's beautiful boy. Yes. Mm. This is in the kitchen. Definitely a cat person, I'm afraid. Oh, that's a Chinese one, yes. Probably one they didn't eat. <laughs> or something. <laughs> The British National Party is my baby. It's not, not necessarily my family's or my husband's or anyone else's, it's mine, all mine, my own, for me. And I love it. It's mine. <laughs> all mine. <laughs> Mm. 
I noticed a little while referred to an Asian as a Paki. Yes, I did. That's, 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 a, that's a legal term for them. They refer to themselves as Pakis. Pakistanis are Pakis. We sorted off into the sunset. Yeah. But don't you accept that some Asians find that offensive? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I really don't care. I would never call one a Paki to his face because I don't converse with them. But so you... do you call black people niggers? I do in private sometimes. Why not? They call themselves niggers. Have you heard them? So what I do in the privacy of my own home is my own business, as far as I'm concerned. If I went around with placards saying niggers out, that'd be a totally different matter. But I don't. Hi, Val. It's Lynn. Um, just asking if uh, you're going to come along to the fair and do the day of action. And um, how many people are coming with you? We just want to get some idea of numbers down there. Um, anyway, give me a bell that... Lynn is busy organising a mass BNP day of action to protest against plans to build a mosque near Fareham in Hampshire. Is performing brilliantly. Her boss is Andy McBride. He's got big plans for the day. I think there's going to be hundreds of people turning up. Uh, we are definitely going to get the support of the local residents. So you want London? Yeah. South East? Yes. Wales? Midlands what? and down, really. Midlands and down. It's too far. Any, for it's it's not worth it, no. Uh, Richard Barnbrook, yeah. I think he'd be more than interested on this one. So oh, yes, nice I can see Richard turning him. up for him. Um, right. Let's do something like um, uh, like in the Second World War with a, with a women's voluntary movement. Oh, yes. And we could have a little, little thing <laughs> selling hot tea and biscuits and things. Yes, that's true. Do you know what I mean? Yes. We, could, we could actually put some kind of theme to this as well. Because we're actually, so, are we, we're actually going to the site, aren't we? Or are we, we going are to the site? We are indeed. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to that the site. As okay. well, there's going to be multiple things going on. Okay. But we want to try and get that theme, that, that 1940s theme again. Yes. All we're, band together, mate. All band together. Yeah. We're all in this for the long haul. OK, I think that's just about it for now. You yeah, see how much I need to be told what to do? Yes. <laughs> Someone who needs no telling is Marlene Guest. You don't like misters, do you? Yeah. She's been at the forefront of local politics in Rotherham since her marriage fell apart. Come on, then. Come on, say hello to that mister. Say hello to that mister. When I went to a party and somebody said... Uh, I saw your ex. I said, oh, we're divorced now. She says I would have divorced him when he had a kid to this other woman and I didn't even know about it. And he'd had a, he'd had a child to another woman while we were together and I didn't know. Marlene's ex denies these claims. Hello. Her four children have left home and she lives alone with her parrot, Smarty. <laughs> 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 When you find out that the person you were married to and love has gone off with somebody else, it does hurt. But you have to get up and get on with things. And if that hadn't have happened, I wouldn't have joined the BNP. So you exchange one lot of things for another, don't you? Marlene's distributing flyers for the upcoming local council by-election. She's hoping the BMP can claim its first councillor in the Valley Ward. This is quite a rough area. They've got one or two people in it that really try and, and keep it nice, but it's a, it's a losing battle when you've got people that just don't care. You're coming out to vote for us. Oh, is it British National Party? Yeah. Are you, Are you? Um... This is Guest. Yeah, I will leave your leaflet and I think it's very good. Um, I really want to buy it to you, Sam, because I thought that your leaflet was that good. You've got me address. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your polling card, haven't you? No. Right. Are you on the electoral list? Yeah, I should be. Right, we're going to polling station. You don't always need it. If you're on the electoral list, you can vote. Yeah. You've been out to vote yet? Why not? Oh, come on, stick her in pram, take you five minutes. Do you know who I stand for? No. BMP. BMP. British right. National Party. Are you going to get me out? Where are you? In that one? Bought one bedroom flat, yeah. She's two. Do you live on your own? No, I live with Dad. We've been here for hours and we've been not back. I mean, she's, she's, I can't lie, I can't say that room what, until she's six. Have a think about coming out and voting for us, your electoral list. That's it. 
Are you going? Are you going out to vote? Why not? I don't vote. No. Oh well, you can't grumble then, can you? No. If you don't vote, don't moan. I don't moan. <laughs> Marlene's election leaflets are countering claims that the BMP are racists and Holocaust deniers. What do you think about the Holocaust? I think it was an absolutely terrible thing. Um, I've never, ever denied it. Now, Nick Griffin queried numbers. I mean, it's sort of set in stone, six million. But we don't really know how many, do we? I mean, I'll read anything, and I've read a thing called Did Six Million Jews Really Die? Somebody gave it to me and I read it, and it was on about the numbers and that if they'd have kept the crematoria going in this little camp for 24-7 for 50 years, they still couldn't have burnt that amount of bodies. So, I mean, then I thought, well, some died of other things, but then again, they, 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 they cremated them all, didn't they? So I do maybe query the numbers. <sighs> Why do you think there would be lies about the numbers? I don't know. Compensation, the Jews putting, putting Germany on a guilt trip, I don't know. I've never really thought about it. Some good, the only good that came of it was what they, what they gleaned from what they did, didn't it? What do you mean? Well, apparently, didn't they get a lot of dentistry and plastic surgery? I've read it somewhere, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. But, Plastic surgery and dentistry and other, other things they found out by what they did. What, by, by the German experiments on yeah. the prisoners? Yeah, yeah, and that, I mean, you can't say that's good, really. But don't, don't, don't tell me I don't believe in the Holocaust because it really angers me. I do. I do. Just not sure about the numbers? I'm just not sure about the numbers, yeah. The Cass family home is close to Dewsbury, a largely Asian area. It's dirty, scruffy, rough. Their values are different to our values. They take pride in their car. Um, white people tend to take pride in their house. You know, they're, they're, they're changing the country into a, a Muslim state. I think Britain's turning into a Muslim state? I think it will be in um, a good few years, yes. If, if things aren't done, absolutely. And how do you think that will come about? Probably a war, I don't know. I don't know, but I don't think it's going to be pleasant. I want these houses back to be my white brothers and sisters. Um, it just makes me feel... Well, cross, I suppose. I don't know. It's, it's, it shouldn't be like this. And what would happen if you walked through here? I don't think I'll come out alive. And I say that laughing because if I don't laugh, I'd cry. As party manager, Susie's husband, Nick, is a central figure within the BNP. Their living room has become a sorting office for BNP mail. All this, all this is just the mail. This is the mail, yeah. To, uh, it's for the uh, the leadership challenge on Thursday. There's a leadership challenge on Thursday. Yeah. Who's yeah. standing? Uh, Chris Jackson's standing um, challenging Nick Griffin for leadership. But um, I'm not sure whether he's uh, the quality of of Nick for the leader of the party. And what's your role in the, in the election then? I'm the returning officer. All right. So, yeah. not, you're not supposed to take a view, are you? On um, who's the most suitable candidate. Well, I mean, I'm allowed a, a view. Um, you know, I'll abide by the rules of of the election, and uh, it'll be done completely honestly and above board. And whoever wins, I'll serve in the and continue the role that I'm doing. If uh, Chris Jackson wins and he sees me fit to continue that role, but um, there's not a returning officer in the land who hasn't got a political opinion. So where are these going now, these guys? These are going upstairs, out of the way of your camera. <laughs> OK, well, this is the rough copy of my brochure. Um, I haven't quite decided over 
colourings or anything yet, but I think we're going to go for the white. There it is in black. As well as personal training, Susie also offers a massage service. Nick stands in for a demonstration. Before he entered the world of right-wing politics, he was a professional squash player. So did you prefer it when Nick was a professional sportsman, Susie? I did, yeah. <laughs> Why? I'd have much preferred to have been a squash player's wife than a politician's wife. <laughs> well, tell me about being a politician's wife. Uh, it's very stressful. I don't like people labelling you when they don't know what's what the scar is, and or even if they do know the scar, you know, it would um, it'd be really nice to say, uh, oh yeah, my husband's um, you know a politician or whatever. People don't think too highly of politicians these days, do they? Well, no, they don't. And, you know, I don't think too highly of politicians either. Well, can you tell me about your tattoo, Nick? Uh, the, the top one is a wild bar, and the bottom one is a tree of life. And it's um, the both, basically, um, Northern European uh, symbols for a healthy and strong life. For Nick, the tattoo on his arm represents the tree of life, a universal and ancient symbol. The same symbol is also used as the emblem of the National Alliance, an American white supremacist group. Nick denies any connection to the group and their beliefs. The day of action has arrived. And the protest against plans to build a new mosque in Fareham is about to begin. The turnout isn't the hundreds Lynn had hoped for. In fact, the number is closer to 30. And they've ditched the 1940s theme for good old leafleting and selling their right-wing paper on the street. Thank you. Bye. Would you like to buy a newspaper, sir? You're having a look. You sure? It's only 60p. However, it seems not everyone is against the idea of a new mosque. I'd like one of these built round here, would you? Pardon? Yeah. would like one of these built round here, would you? Like one for me? <laughs> well, don't mate, if one of them bleed and rape your daughter. When people say it doesn't bother them, what, what do you make of that? Um, it's not going to bother everyone. Some people have no feeling of nationalism or belonging or... Yeah, mate! Oh. Yeah, up! Retard sense of uh, intelligence, you know. <laughs> With minimal sales, Lynn and fellow party activists decide to move their stall into the centre of town. Should I these all up together? Sorry, I'm not being funny. Can I just ask... ..about having a mosque? Well, for Why does it take here? all over Fairham if people are just going there practising their religion. I don't understand what the problem is. Three to four parking, uh, tarmac parking spaces, built on arable land... Right. ..that could be put to better but use for the community. don't you think it's nice to have diversity in Fairham? No. no. I don't think it's nice to have diversity anyway. Myself. That's the answer to your question. We have a that's my answer. No, that's fine, and I'm not trying to get in an argument. I just don't understand. I work in Southampton, <laughs> in St Mary's, where there's a huge population of um, people who use the mosque and I can't understand what the problem is. Oh, I think it's really nice. I really welcome it. Oh, I don't understand why other people life. don't. And I can't understand what the problem is. Well, well, good, try good, good. Their culture. Look, look, I'm not being funny. No, no. It's, it's about... Excuse me, can I... Different That's fine. That's their fine. Culture on you. To each his own, own, I say. When they impose their culture on you. Do it's a complete yeah. no-win at that one. Don't patronise me, cos we're... Mind you, she would benefit from having a burqa, wouldn't she? That's what I say. She'd benefit from a burqa. You know, we've got plenty of us go and live in Spain, don't we? She can go and convert and live with them and shag them, do whatever she likes. I don't care. No, 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 no. no, no please no, hear me. because you're just said... dribbling on. Listen, no, I am not. What Listen you're saying me. is you have a problem with the Asian community. No, and that's no, what it you, comes you haven't down let me. To. You yeah, haven't no, let it me does. You have a problem with the Asian let me community. Come to the point, please. Some people put forward very good arguments, and I'm all for everybody having their own opinion. But I don't understand it. Doesn't ring with me somehow. You know, if she doesn't understand it, that's fair enough. I don't want to talk about it. Why don't you engage Lynn when people come and and, and I mean, surely you should be trying to convince her. 
No. I mean, you're a you represent a political party. Yeah, I can't be bothered. I'm not, not in the giving vein. How's that? You couldn't. I'm not going to convert her anyway. I don't want to convert people. I'm happy with what I believe, and she's happy with what she believes, and she's welcome to it. Freedom of speech. That's the answer. Lynn and her friends blame poor newspaper sales on the presence of a camera crew. All I'm saying is, do you think we're putting people off? I think I, I think you're putting people off. Therefore, if you could say, perhaps just discreetly be across the other side of the street, just so that you get your own view of it, you know, because at the moment I think we're not getting the correct view. Because okay. we're having people putting their thumbs up to us where we've dropped leaflets, you see. OK, I must go, because I'm, I'm dragging those, but I'll wait for you and you flash the lights, OK? Oh, dear me, I wish I'd never said yes to this. <laughs> Squaring Nick's political career with the children and Susie's work is a balancing act for the Cass family. Shall we push it high? Yeah. Let's, let, let me help you. Come here. Ah. Let me pick you up. Indeed, Nick's politics affect even the most fundamental areas of family life. In my birth plan, um, you, you write down exactly how you want your birth to go and, um, you know, you, your requests and your wishes. And, um, one of my requests was that I wanted, you know, a white European midwife. And what happened? I actually was given um, an, a Caribbean lady midwife and I had to ask if they didn't mind to find another midwife. What, wanted... was, it, what was it about it that didn't make you feel comfortable? Well, I just wanted a, a white midwife. But for, for what reason? Because I'm white, you know. Yeah, it was being a bit. It was being awkward, you know. I had absolutely nothing against her. She, she's delivered many, many babies. Not a problem, you know. I was stating a point, and and what was the point you were making? That other people can have wishes, and uh, and uh, you know, see what this is. What it's like when a white person says it. Was that, was that your idea or was it Nick's idea? Who do you think? You tell me. It was Nick's idea. <laughs> you can sit there, I'll sit in the middle. I'll sit there. Right, OK. Hold on tight. I can't hold. So when you married Nick, did you have any idea that your life would go this way and this is how things would be? Not when we first started going out with each other. I mean, we're obviously... We were both really young. Well, I was. I mean, I was 19, so no, I didn't expect I'd be going down this path. I don't really know what I thought, but I didn't expect this, no. You know, just because you're in the same room as somebody doesn't mean to say you're actually doing something together or, you know, having a conversation on the same wavelength. As long as he pulls his weight and still does stuff around the house and helps with the children and stuff, you know, I can I can live with it. I think she muttered Nazis as she shuffled off. In Hampshire, Lynn and her BMP friends have moved their anti-mosque campaign to Fareham Town Centre. If we still had national service, they wouldn't come over. He should bring back national service. They're very, they're very clever. These people. They're not stupid by any any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely, they see a soft target and they move in. And oh boy, are we it! Are they coming to arrest us? In between selling papers, Lynn and her friends throw in a few anti-Muslim lies to stir things up. What do you want? Have you have a paper. You have to eat halal meat in the Navy. It's all halal meat in the Navy. And, and, and McDonald's as well. Yeah. Hello, how are we? Hello, Andy. Do you want to buy paper? Yes, I get your ass down. Of course we sold hundreds. <laughs> Andy, you didn't do all that bloody leafleting, did you? Yeah. You. Yeah, what do I tell you? What have I told you? With the help of information officer Andy McBride, sales of papers improve. But it's not long before Lynn and the gang run into trouble again. Well, that's 
because you're ignorant. Not interested. Do you want anything? Makes two of you, doesn't it? <laughs> Pardon? Makes two of you. Love, if you're happy with us, country, you People can go ahead. People have a right to speak. I'm not arguing that you exactly. shouldn't say anything. You're being exactly. rude. Don't but speak to him. She's rude. You know, you're spreading malicious lies no, and not a lie. It is a lie. Planning permission for a mosque. It's true. And what's wrong with people having freedom to worship? They can worship in their own countries, as far no, as I'm concerned. Well, I'll tell you what. Once you, you lose your family, right, in a bombing, perhaps you'll come back to it's our land. I don't agree with the war in Iraq either. Join the United Nations. When you see people and they come and spark up in front of us, uh, we know that they're being sent down to exactly to do that. We get left wing operatives coming down to cause that kind of problem. Oh, yeah. do, you so, think do you think that woman was a left wing operative? Definitely. Without a doubt. Well, Absolutely not, no just doubt. A, not just a part no, of No, no, no. Just, I, I, just, I actually said to Richard just beforehand yeah. watch this one, she's going to be a problem. In Rotherham, it's D-Day. Campaigning is over for the local council by-election. Marlene arrives for the count with BNP candidate Carol Myers. Hi, uh, How'd it go? I came second. Second. The, be second. the beat us by over a thousand. The beat us by over a thousand last time. They've beat us by not quite 400 this time. How'd you feel, Marlene? Elated because it's a very staunch Labour ward and we're just catching them up every time. The vote is dropping. It's been a... What, what were the turnout? Very, very poor turnout. Just under 2,000. What were it? 20 what? 19.5. 19.5% turnout. But Mr Cameron's doing very well. I quite agree with him and his family values, because he's right. Because while there's a breakdown of families, this is when you get all the hassle. So right. I do quite agree with him. He's a proud one. Right, OK. Good evening, <laughs> dear. Don't forget, vote Conservative next time. <laughs> A few weeks later, it's the biggest day on the BNP calendar, the red, white and blue. This annual political rally in a Derbyshire field is attended by die-hard BNP members and their families. While party manager Nick Cass, one of the event's organisers, is on duty, Susie looks after their kids. Marlene's here too, catching up with old friends. Oh, I made you outside Leeds Crown Court, didn't I? There's a high security presence, but by the odd fracas, the weekend runs smoothly. He's an Englishman, he's a piece of his England, he should be able to do with it what he damn well likes. The English have been here for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, and this is our land. You're involved in a struggle more important than any that the people of these islands have ever undergone in the 15,000 years they've been here. It's on your shoulders. This people on this land, our people on our land. Thank you. The weekend is a heavy mix of rabble-rousing nationalistic speeches. This is our country and we will defend it to the last breath. Children's activities and nationalistic entertainment. Still buzzing from the result of her local by-election, Marlene is keen to pass on the good news to party leader Nick Griffin. Hey, what about ours so in Valley Ward all, then? The, the, the beat is by over a thousand in May. On July, the beat is by 400 and a half. Yeah. Nearly yeah. there. Yeah. 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 It's all these women we stand, you know. She <laughs> <laughs> is. Yeah. I, I've, I've got to be going to letterboxes soon. It's, it's like an urge now. I can't <laughs> pass one. <laughs> I, I did that many. Right. Well, then, take See you later on. Catch okay. you later. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. When it gets cool tonight, there'll be barbies and fires, and it's the one time where you get together and everybody is of the same thought, everybody is of the same reason, of the same mind, and because it is a difficult... That's me, isn't it? 
Why did somebody shout at me? Later, the main stage is given over to the entertainment. Marlene's come to read some poetry she's written to the BNP faithful. The bed's too big without you, and it gets so awful cold. I miss your arms around my waist, but I don't miss your stinking feet. You used to smoke them roll-ups, and I lived in this foggy haze. Your clothes stunk and your breath smelt, and it lingered round for days. No one keeps the garden nice, and I get so short of brass. I miss your voice, I miss your fun, and no one calls me our lass. When things go wrong and I'm all alone, that's the time I'll break down and cry. Though you're just an adulterous tosser now, you were once one hell of a guy. Now people don't like poetry. Yeah, they're not really listening anyway. They don't like poetry. Yes, they do. Well, they are. Oh, you. you're welcome. Thank you, Thank you for knowing. Over on the other side of the field, Nick Cass has once again arranged the BMP Strongest Man competition. And he claims the title for the second year running. So your husband's the strongest man in the BMP? Apparently so, yeah. Are you proud of him? Yeah. <laughs> Can I just ask you about being, you know, a BMP wife? What, what does it mean to you? I think the term shouldn't be BMP wife, it should be BMP widow. What do you mean? Well, you no longer see your husband because he's then got a, a first love that's not you. <laughs> if the phone rings, well then, it has to be answered and emails have to be done and jobs have to be done and you have to look after the children <laughs> on, on your own. And so it's uh, not joining the BMP wives, it's joining the BMP widows. On occasions it would be nice just to leave the hard work to somebody else's husband to do. I wish I was a, a footballer's wife, at least I'd have the money to go with it. <laughs> the winner of the Strong Money event, Nick Cass. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome, Nick. While Nick and Susie stuck around to enjoy his victory... What a powerful guy. Cameras were asked to leave by Deputy Leader Simon Darby. He said guests would want to let their hair down without being afraid of saying the wrong thing. The British National Party, although mainly male orientated, thank God, <laughs> does have many women in key positions throughout the country. It is it's two weeks after the Fairham Day of Action. And in Surrey, Lynn is giving her first ever speech to a BNP meeting. And of course, we have the Kirch, Kutch, and Kinder Hausfrau of the Germanic and Nordic cultures, which have been systematically denigrated, destroyed, and debased, along with other family values, by the Marxist left endemic in this country and government. Our Britannia. Lynn's ambitious about climbing up the party ladder. Would you like to take on a, a, a national job? Um, yes, I would. I would. Um, you know, any way I can help promote the party and do what I can for it, I'm in the offing for. I'm quite happy to do it. Um, but uh, we just have to see which way the which way the wind blows with things, don't we? I think it's just a question of, of trying to perfect one role and then trying to go on to another one. It's a it's a progress. I think the more you can do to, to progress the party. Um, and you've always got people coming up from behind, which is how we like it. Every day I do work for the British National Party, so... I think it's a good thing, because in many ways, it keeps me sharp. I'm hot and I'm bothered and I need a drink. Which I can't... Only, I can only have one because I'm driving. Mustn't drink and drive. <laughs> Just done the bloody washing up. They've been printing me one every week. I've been doing very well lately. Another one... Um, a month later, and with the by-election behind her, Marlene has managed to keep herself busy. So I've been doing that while you've been away. You've been writing to the newspapers a lot? Oh, frequently, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I'm just so angry. I, I spend my whole day being angry. Do you think you'll be angry for the rest of your life, Marlene? Yeah. Yeah. But it's the anger that drives you. If you were complacent, you wouldn't bother. Marlene, there, there might be people watching this who think that you just need a, some love in your life. No. I'll leave it alone. I'll find better things to do with my time. Like the BNP? Uh, lots of things, not just the BNP. Lots of things. Since the breakup of her marriage, Marlene has found an outlet for her anger. That's when Nick came to speak. Nick Griffin. I really like Nick Griffin. And in the BMP, a home for her affection. So even though Nick Griffin has described the Holocaust, the Holler hoax, and he's got a conviction for incitement for racial hatred, that doesn't bother you? No. Tony Blair told us lies, and there's hundreds of thousands of people died in Iraq because of the lies he told. Are you going to go on about that? He's a liar. He wants to strap into a tank and run through Basra. I thought there's hundred and odd of our lads being killed on a pack of lies. Are you saying anything about that then? Or what did my granddad suffer for? What did all my uncles suffer for? For everybody to stroll in this country and strip it of its assets. Do you think no. we should have gone to war with Germany? I don't really know the ins and outs of it. Um, I don't think we should be at war with Iraq. I don't think killing people wholesale... Um... Yeah, I'm not talking about Iraq, I'm talking about going to war with Germany, the Second World War. I've not given it much thought, oh, to be honest. Oh, I mean... No, honestly, I have not given it much thought. Whether we should have gone to war against Hitler. Oh, then we're going to come back to the BNP being a Nazi party. Well, you raised the... the no, you're digging at it. You are digging at it. I asked you whether we should have gone to war with Germany, and you're saying you don't know. <sighs> well, it's the same as Saddam, isn't it? Saddam were cruel to his people. Should we have gone to war with Saddam? But what's that solved? I've not really given it a load of thought. Um, I don't believe in what Hitler stood for. But this country's got a very lot, a of, of great deal of Hitleristic tendencies. After an eventful summer, the Casses are settling back into work and family life. I think it's a saw, is that? Oh, watch the watch. <laughs> but things have changed slightly since Nick was told that he'd no longer be paid for his work in the BNP. Today, he's seeing to some mail order deliveries from the BNP lockup near his house. So, are you, not, are you no longer party manager then? I'm not party manager, no. Uh, there's three people taking over as party manager now. Uh, we've now got a management team, so that means it'll be three times as effective. Uh, which is a positive breakthrough for the party and, uh, as I say, we keep going forward and uh, you move into new roles. You're drilling a hole in my wall, you monkey. <laughs> so what are you going to do for income now, then? Uh, well, I don't know. I've got various things uh, lined up. Um, it's like anybody else. Get to the job centre. How does Susie feel about it? Um, she's fine. She's the same as me. You know, we're both party people and whatever advances the party is the main thing. Are you going to be a builder when you're a man? Yeah. Are you? Are you going to build a house? Yeah. Will you build me a really big house? Yeah. And some stables? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, nice. yeah, nice. yeah, nice. I think where people who are more interested in family and uh, ideals and having a safe, secure future for the children than having bags of money, you know, bags of money uh, only important when you can't afford to pay bills. They're not important when you don't have a country. So would you, would you like to move out of the city and go and live in the countryside? Yeah, my ideal place would be Dad, in a nice house s sitting on top of a hill looking over all my land with trees and a stream and um, then are all my horses in the field. Um, How does the BNP fit into your fantasy? Well, I suppose it'd be green and pleasant land. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
Would you mind if Nick quit the party? No. I wouldn't mind. Um, quite nice to have a bit more of a normal life. I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> understand why all you blokes aren't on front line with me fighting because this is our country we women are multitasked and that is why this party needs us as much as england needs the party